Well, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to Valley Harvest Ministries online. We're coming to you this morning from our newly renovated sanctuary. The renovation of our Omega Sanctuary has been our project for most of the shutdown period. And uh, today is the first day we had everything back in place and sound checked and so forth so we could go ahead and use it this morning. We're excited about being here. The only thing missing is you're not, but we look forward to having you back here real soon so that we can experience this, uh, this wonderful time together. It's a beautiful day outside today. The Lord has given us a, a wonderful day. It's the day He has made, and let's make a choice today that we are going to rejoice in it, that we're going to praise Him in it. In just a moment, we're going to have uh, a time of praise and worship that I want to encourage you to enter into right where you are. Uh, I, w I would encourage you to, to really get involved with it, stand to your feet, clap your hands, praise the Lord, because when you do that, you usher in His presence into your very atmosphere. You dispel the darkness when you do that. At the name of Jesus, everything must surrender. And so I encourage you to enter in to the time of worship. I want to encourage you to let us know that you're with us today. Before the service started uh, with the countdown, many people had already checked in and said, we are here and we're happy to see you this morning. And that means a lot to us. It helps us sort of keep a role as well to have an idea how many people we're reaching with our online services. I want to also mention that today is Mission Sunday. The first Sunday of the month is the Sunday that we emphasize world missions, something that uh, this church is very involved with. I heard from Pastor Chong this morning. Uh, it was actually, you know, 12 hours. Uh, they're 12 hours ahead of us. They have uh, uh, having church today, and they have assembled in several different groups to meet the um, criteria that they have been given. And uh, he's doing a great job there. The church in Thailand is growing, and we are supporting it. I want to remind you uh, to give in the offering, to designate your offering to Pastor Chong if you are supporting him on a monthly basis and to the Thailand Project as well. The slide will be going up at the end of the service today to tell you how that you can make a contribution to the ministry, how that you can send your tithe and your offering or your designated giving in. And I just want to encourage you today that God's Word said for us to give, and it shall be given unto us good measure, Think about it. Good measure. God always measures out his blessings uh, abundantly. It says good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For whatsoever measure you use, it will be meted back to you again. That's Luke 6:38. So when the time comes for you to give uh, and to support the work of ministry, I encourage you to do so, and I know that you'll be blessed. Let's enter into the time of praise and worship. Let's honor the Lord in every way today. Let's lift Him up and exalt Him, because He says if we'll do that, He will draw all men unto Him. <laughs>
your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears, like holy water on my
goodness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water on my steel. It's like holy water on my steel. It's like holy Praise today for his forgiveness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of one more time. Let us. and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord. hallelujah father we worship you bless today. your name jesus we worship you today. hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We Wherever you him. are, can you just lift Hallelujah. your hands and invite his presence Bless to be your in your room? Bless your name. Lord, Bless we just name. ask that Hallelujah. every living room, every bedroom, Glory every man. space that is filled by your people today, just fill that place, Lord. Let them experience what it is for your spirit to move right there in their midst, Lord, just like it's moving right here. Lord, we welcome you into this service. We welcome you into the live stream. We welcome you in every aspect of this service in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 You know, as I've gotten older and as I've gotten more mature, I've realized that there is nothing that I can do without the Lord. Everything that I want to be a success in, everything that I attempt to do, I need Him more than I've ever needed Him in my life. We need Him right now during this time more than we have ever needed Him in our lives. You know, we're kind of stuck in the middle. We can't see where we came from very well, but we can't see where we're going very well either. We're just stuck right here. But I have good news for you today. God has promised to be right there in the middle, wherever we are today. He's promised that His presence will be right there, that He will help us to, to sort it out. He'll help us to overcome, and He will help us to always, in the end, be the winner and to be better. So I want to encourage you today. We're not enough unless He comes. We're not enough unless He's right here with us today. So as we sing this song today, I want you just to reach out. I want you just to ask Him to be right where you are today. And to speak peace and to bring peace to your situation. In the name of Jesus. Can't go back to the beginning.
prayer right now. Can you sing it to the Lord? I'm not enough. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Give God praise and give him glory and honor. You're not alone. Hallelujah. He, he's there. He's with you right now this morning. If you would just lift your hands right in your home, right in your sanctuary, in your home, just lift your hands today and lift it up to the Lord and give him praise and give him worship for who he is, for his greatness, for his power, for his glory. This morning, magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Paul said when he was exiled on the, on the Isle of Patmos that he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And it was on that day that God gave him great revelation and spoke to him. Right now, while you're being sequestered and while we're being sequestered in our homes and quarantined in our homes, whatever way you want to phrase it this morning, I want to tell you that God wants to speak to you. He wants to give you revelation and understanding as we go into this new season as we go into this new season, we're coming out of this better, Pastor Sheila said uh, several weeks ago. We're coming out of this better. Be prepared to come out better in the name Amen. of Jesus. Be prepared to come out equipped, come out with anointing, come out with revelation and understanding that we might be able to do the work of the kingdom yes. in Jesus' name. Come on again one more time and put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning again, everyone. Such a good time of praise and worship this morning. And uh, now it's time for us to get into the Word. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, I'm going to bring a word to you this morning that uh, I have been waiting on the timing for this word to come forth. It's something that uh, the Lord gave me on an airplane. Uh, actually, in February, when I was coming back from Thailand, and I uh, have just uh, wrestled with the timing of this message, but I believe that right now is a time when God's people need to receive this word, because we are living in a time that is uh, challenging us, it is challenging our faith, it is causing us to uh, be tempted to have anxiety and concern but I believe that God wants to let us know that he's got it all covered. He is here in this place. And as we just sang, not for a minute have we been forsaken and we will not be forsaken. If you have your Bibles handy, I want to encourage you to open them with me. We're going to read uh, just a couple of short passages of Scripture. The first one in Genesis chapter 12. We're going to read the first four verses of Genesis chapter 12. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Now we're going to jump over into the New Testament and read two verses from Galatians chapter 3, the two verses are verses 13 and 14 of Galatians 3, and it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, 
that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I want to remind you also that in the book of Hebrews, it reminds us that we are now operating under a better covenant established upon better promises even than the old covenant. Would you bow with me? Let's ask the Lord to bless our time around his word. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you that it is full of blessing and anointing and life. It is full of direction for us. And Lord, today as we uh, move further into this passage, I pray that you would give us revelation and understanding. Lord, that you would speak to every heart and every mind and every spirit, Lord, that is tuned in today to receive this word. May revelation come. May challenge come. May faith arise. And Lord, may we have the ability to believe you and trust you and to receive all that you have for us today. I bind every hindrance today that would hinder this word from fulfilling its purpose. And I thank you now, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to talk today about the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. I wonder how many of you know today that you, as a child of God, are blessed. I thank God for the blessing of the Lord. What does it mean to be blessed? Well, it means that the Lord's hand rests upon you, first of all. It means that everything you touch is blessed. It means that God, listen to this word, He has commanded His blessing to follow you. I don't know about you, but I really like the thought of that. I mean, who can challenge or who could possibly annul the proclamation and the command of Almighty God and He has looked down upon you and I as His children and He has spoken forth and commanded that His blessing rest on us and follow us. Now, there are some examples in the Word of God. There are many examples of how this played out in the Word of God. But I want to just talk quickly about three men in the Bible that I think we can uh, see an example of this in. Those guys were Joseph, Jacob, and Job. Joseph, Jacob, and Job. Do you remember their stories? Well, old Joe, little Job, he had more trouble than a little. Even his brothers hated him. His brothers tried to uh, do bad things and to ensure that he would not be blessed of the Lord, that his dream would not be fulfilled. They conspired against him. It seemed like everywhere the man went, uh, somebody was doing him wrong. Somebody was letting him down. But God just kept blessing Joseph, and he kept on elevating him. In spite of all of that, why was that? Because the blessing and the favor of the Lord had been commanded over him and there was nothing or nobody that could cancel it out or stop it. That's what it means to be blessed. That is what it means to be blessed. Do you know that you are blessed this morning? Well, let's talk about Jacob for a minute. Jacob had a very simple job. Uh, we don't get the impression that he was highly trained, highly educated, doing anything specialized. Matter of fact, we find him in this story. He had the, the lonely and, uh, I guess, uh, not a very uh, exciting job of tending cattle for his future father-in-law. I'm sure that was just not a real high-paying job. But everything that Jacob touched increased. Laban did his best to keep him under subjection. 
Laban did his best to keep him dependent upon him. But Jacob just kept accumulating more and more. The more Laban tried to limit him, the more God expanded Jacob. Now let's talk about Job for a minute. Everybody knows at least part of Job's story. Job was a very wealthy man. And there was a time in his life that he came under a very severe season of attack. His possessions, his family, even his health was under attack. When it looked like, though, that he had lost everything, he still held on to God. And when God was done with this situation, the Bible records that Job was ten times better off than he was at the beginning of the ordeal that he went through. The thing that I really want you to see in all of these men is that regardless of what they encountered in life, God always caused them to rebound and to prosper. I said, regardless of what these guys encountered in life, God always, every time, caused them to rebound and to prosper. The thing that happened to them that looked like it would devastate them, when God was finished with it, they were made better because of it. We could say it like this, they couldn't go under for going over. Joseph kept the right perspective in all of that, and I encourage you to do that as well if you are facing some things and going through some things even today. Joseph kept the right perspective on it all when he told his evil brothers. He said, it's okay, guys. You meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. Can I tell you something, child of God? Whatever you are facing, God can and God will turn that thing around and it will result in your good. I can say that with confidence. I can say that with boldness. I can say that without a doubt because that's what God's word said he would do. He said that he was able to cause all things to work together for good. To them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. I wonder how many here today know that you're blessed. Do you know that you're blessed? Well, in the New Testament, one of my favorite verses in the third division or third John uh, chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, Beloved, let God say this to you today. Hear God saying this to you today. You are his beloved. He says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosperous. I wonder today how many of you value the blessing of the Lord on your life. And I wonder how many of you will not Ever take it for granted. You see, you have the awesome honor and the awesome privilege to experience the blessing and the favor of God on your life, and it covers everything that you touch. He said, everything that you set your hand unto. Well, I know you want chapter and verse for that, so I'm going to give it to you. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. And, you know, I, I could just give you that one verse. In verse 8, it says that all that you set your hand unto, child of God, will be blessed. But I think you need to hear more than that one verse. So let's just look at it, beginning with verse 1 in chapter 28. And it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings 
shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now listen, he said all this is going to come on you, child of God. All of this is going to come your way. All of this is going to catch up with you. All of this is going to chase you down. All of this is going to overtake you. He said, blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed thou shalt be when thou comest in and blessed thou shalt be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. And the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. He shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that they are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Just, just stop just a minute now and just... Just pause and see la and just sort of think on what that verse said. The Lord is going to open unto you his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou wilt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Doesn't that sound wonderful? That is clearly the word of the Lord. That is God's promise to you and I. That is his will to you and me his children. I said it is his promise and it is his will. Accept that today, child of God. God's promise to you, God's will for you is that you experience this kind of blessing that is described in this passage. Don't let the devil cause you doubt that. That is God's will. And God's promise. So, that being the case, the next thing we're going to talk about today is how do we release that blessing in our lives? But before we talk about releasing it, uh, just let me ask you this. Do you want that kind of a blessing? Do you believe that God said the blessing of Abraham has now been extended to you? He said, what he said to Abraham, he has extended to you and I. He says, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you a blessing. I don't know about you, but I want that. You can have it, and everyone around you can know that it has come from God alone. I think that's an area that we need to get okay with. Uh, we don't need to feel like we got to do it our way and we got to get the credit. We got to be real quick to give the credit to God. We got to be real ready to give the glory to God and say, hey, you don't know how I got here. I'm here and I'm blessed, but it's not of my doing, it's by his doing because I serve him, because I have followed his word, because I have kept his commandments, because I have trusted in him. And 
obeyed his word. Who wants this kind of blessing to, to be your story, for your family, for your church? Well, here are the keys to receiving that blessing and for walking in it. They are simply faith and obedience. It requires faith and obedience. And now listen to me today. You have to have both of those. God said that in Hebrews 11, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm telling you, what we're talking about today, this blessing of the Lord for his children, it's a real thing. There's substance to it. it it's, it, I mean, the treasure is in the bank. God can open up his good treasure and he can pour it out on you. There is substance to it. There is evidence of it. And that is in our faith. But faith involves more than just liking the sound of that. It involves more than just believing that. Faith is when you and I become a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So faith, in a lot of ways, it simply boils down to this. It boils down to trust. Trust. And I want to know today, uh, God wants to know today, are you trusting Him fully? Are you able to put your trust in Him fully? Now that being said, to help us to determine if our faith is such that has brought us to the place that we are putting our trust in Him completely, where He can release this kind of blessing over us, I'm going to ask you some very pointed questions. These are diagnostic in nature. I want to know, have you trusted God completely with your stewardship? Stewardship simply means that God's given you something. What have you done with it? What are you doing with it? Are you mindful of the fact that what you have is not something that you're responsible for getting, but it's really God has allowed it all to come your way and he has entrusted you with it. What are you doing with your stewardship? Do you believe, do you really believe that God, your covenant God, Jehovah Jireh, that he is your provider and that he is providing for you and that he will continue to provide for you it's not you it is him that is providing let me ask you this who is in charge of your finances well let's let's bring it on home a little bit more who is the lord of your finances. And finally, let me ask you this. When are you going to come to the place that you obey God fully and completely in the area of your financial stewardship? Now, as I've asked those questions, hopefully you and the Holy Spirit have been diagnosing just exactly where you are when it comes to this thing of believing God and trusting God in the area of your stewardship. But now we can analyze that, those diagnostics, and I want to say that there is a simple, undeniable indicator of whether you are trusting God completely and putting yourself in a position for him to bless you and make you a blessing or not. I said there is an undeniable indicator. In other words, what I'm about to tell you is scripturally the litmus test. When I ask this question, there's only two answers. It's yes or no. It's positive or negative. 
There's no gray area here. There are no variables. There are no exceptions. So listen to me carefully as I read this verse of Scripture because it is that indicator of where you are in your faith and trust. God says in Malachi 3, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not room enough to receive it. Now, when I announced that I was going to read Malachi 3 and 10, those of you that are currently already trusting and obeying God in the area of your financial stewardship and your tithing, you perked up because you knew that you were likely to hear something here that was going to affirm or strengthen your faith. If Tithing is something that you have not yet taken the step to do. You probably immediately just sort of was prone to discount that and say, oh, he's going to read that verse. They read that every time they're going to take up an offering. Let me encourage you, don't make that mistake. God's trying to bless you. God's trying to help you. God's trying to give you the, the word of his covenant that will secure you in the midst of times like we're living in right now. He said, bring all the tithe to the storehouse. The word tithe is a Hebrew word. It simply means the tenth part. It, it's easy to see. Tithe, tenth, tithe, tenth. But here's what God says about it. He says, it is holy. Listen, God says the tithe is holy. And he said, if you and I want the blessing that is associated with it, we have to treat it as holy. He says in his word that you and I must come to know the difference between the holy and the profane or the sacred and the common. God said the tithe is holy. In other words, it's one of those sacred things. And if God calls it holy, if we want to be blessed, you and I must call it holy. People get into trouble when they start treating sacred things as common things. It is the first, let, let's define it a little bit more. God's trying to bless you. God wants to bless you more than he's been able to bless you. God wants to encourage you and, and affirm to you that he's got you in this. The tithe, further defining, it's the first tenth of your income. The first tenth of your income. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruits of all thine increase. First fruits. In other words, what God is saying, when you make a profit, be it your expected paycheck or be it something unexpected, a surprise, a blessing that God sent you away. You may not have seen it coming. You may have got a stimulus check you wasn't counting on. Don't know about y'all, but mine hadn't come yet. But when it does, I'm going to honor God with it. He said, the first fruits of all your increase. In other words, when you make a profit, the first thought you should have is, I must glorify God with it. Somebody said, oh, pastor, 
Now, you're talking about the tithe. You're one of those preachers that's talking about giving a tenth of the income. But, you know, I just need to tell you, Pastor, uh, we can't afford to do that. We've got all these bills. We just, we're not making ends meet right now. I don't know how many times I've heard this. Pastor, it's just not in our budget to give a tenth. I want to say to you that God wants to show you that you can tithe and you can be blessed if you will trust him. I want have you read in the word of God how that God multiplies things? Have you read in the word of God that there was a crowd of thousands of people gathered to hear Jesus? Nobody had anything to eat except one little boy and he had a lunch with five loaves and two fish in it. And Jesus took it and multiplied it, and they fed all the people, and there was food left over. Have you read the story about the the widow and her son that was down to the very last ingredients for the last meal they were going to fix? And God said, you give a portion to the prophet that I'm sending. And the scripture said that that, the meal in that barrel and the oil in that cruise did not run dry. They continued to eat of it for many days. Have you read that the Lord takes the oil in a cruise when a woman uh, obeyed him and she poured it out and he calls it to be enough to pay her debts and to have money left over? Don't tell me God won't do the same for you if you obey him. The question is, will you trust and obey him so his blessing can be released over you and your need can be supernaturally met? Do you believe that God wants to meet your needs supernaturally? I certainly do. I believe that he wants to to have his blessing come and find you, just like his word said. Well, somebody else said, oh, pastor, we can't tithe because uh, we can't give a tenth to God. Do you have any idea how much a tenth of my income would be? As much money as I make, do you know how much money that would be? Sure enough. You mean to tell me that God has already been so good to you that you think you can't honor him with a tithe? Wow. He's allowed you to be blessed in spite of all that ignorance. You you have taken such a stand that the enemy has gotten you set up to where he can take it all from you, rob and steal from you overnight. I would hate to be thinking that way. If there is anything that is getting a large percentage of your finances, it should be the work of the kingdom. Here's a good eye-opener. What is it that you spend the most of your earnings on? After all, the Lord said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart... You know, you can... If, if, if you're kind of squeamish about the question, if, if you're just uh, generally answering it because you know the truth but you don't want to say it, take out your check register and go down through it. Take out your credit card statement and go down through there and just see what the bulk of your earnings is spent for. And I'm going to tell you, if it's a large portion is going to anything, it should be the work of the Lord. When God helps you to increase, or make a profit, do you honor him with the tenth part of it? I want to remind you, he said it's holy. What do you say? The word of God says a tenth of it belongs to the Lord. It was designated for the work of the kingdom. He said, bring it to the storehouse 
so there would be provision there. In other words, your heart is to see that God's work is provided for and his heart is to see that your house is provided for. Now, God wants to bless you. The tithe is the covenant portion for the child of God. You either believe that or you don't. You either trust God or you don't. You either obey Him or you don't. You either open up the windows of heaven over you or you leave them closed by disobedience. You either open the door for God to bless you or you open the door for the devil to steal from you. But the sad thing about it is if you refuse to obey God in this, you not only miss out on the blessing, but you miss out on letting God show off the miracle working God that he is in your life. I want to just touch on one more point of this passage and we'll be finished today. I said it's God's promise to you and it's his will for you and I want to tell you that it comes with a warranty. It is a covenant practice that comes with a guarantee. He said, prove me. Now herewith. As far as I know, that's the only place in the Bible that God says, put this to the test and I'll show you. I will guarantee you something today that God can make 90% of your income go further than the 100% you kept to yourself ever did. If you have more month than you have money, You need to trust God and watch Him work. Trust God and watch Him work. He will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And He will stop the thief from siphoning off your increase. You see, some people are working really hard, but they're putting their money in a bag with holes in it. Hosea talks about that. But today, you can arrest the thief and you can please God by repenting and deciding to obey him fully in the matter of your stewardship. God said, by the way, when the thief is caught, he's got to repay. He's got to repay seven times. And I want to say, if you want God to trust you with more, you have to put what he's already given you in his hands. He looks for faithfulness in the small things. He said if one is faithful in the small things, he can be trusted in the greater things. I feel like today, that we have identified a blessing blocker for some people that have been listening. I feel like today some have found revelation of how to release God's blessing and favor in your life. So can I tell you, right now is decision time. It's decision time. Tithing begins with a decision to trust God. If you're a child of God, you have trusted Him with your soul. Will you trust him today with your finances? Will you present your finances and your possessions as a holy thing 
unto the Lord today. I want to encourage you today. Take a step of faith. Take a step of obedience. God really does want to bless you. He really does want to make you a blessing. He only asks that you trust Him completely. What will your answer be? What will your answer be? Would you bow your heads with me and let's answer him together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that we have the assurance of being your children today. Thank you, Lord, that we have the assurance of living and moving and operating in a covenant relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, that we understand that you have promised to be with us, to never leave us nor forsake us, that you have promised to be a part of everything that touches our lives. among all of the wonderful benefits of being a covenant partner, I thank you that we know you as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. Lord, let that truth resonate deep in our spirit today that you really are our provider. Lord, that it is your will and your promise and your plan to bless us and make us a blessing. And Father, today, we've seen it in your word. Your word and your spirit is calling us today to take a step of obedience and trust. Lord, we don't see it in the figures. We don't see it in the budget. It doesn't make sense how it works. But our faith says that if we trust you, we can prove you now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, that you're going to open the windows up over us. You're going to cause us to dwell under an open heaven that we might receive your good treasure of blessing. Lord, your word says, and we believe it, that you will rebuke the devourer from coming and stealing and taking from us the blessing of God. So Lord, today, by faith, we commit to you that we will keep your word, we will treat the tithe as a sacred thing. We will bring the first fruits of our increase. When you cause us, you bless us, you cause us to profit, you cause us to increase. Lord, before we calculate what all we're going to spend it on ourselves, we will calculate that the first fruits of it the tenth part of it is holy and it is sacred unto the Lord God. We will bring it to the storehouse. We will take care of the needs of your house first. And we will rest in the confidence of knowing that you're going to look after our house. Lord, for every believer today, whose faith has been challenged. Many have gone through experiences like Joseph, Jacob, and Job during this pandemic. 
where things look uncertain, God, would you comfort their hearts and assure their hearts today? Lord, we stand in agreement believing that their every need is being met supernaturally according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you today, God, for speaking to us and for setting us up to be blessed and be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, Amen. Folks, it has been a joy worshiping with you today. Until we see you again on Wednesday night, we'll be here for Wednesday school with a special speaker that you don't want to miss. And until then, we simply say, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.